Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm going to try this question right here. Graphing a polar equation, it looks like. We have a polar equation here. R equals 1 minus 3 sine theta. It says graph this equation in rectangular coordinates with theta on the horizontal and R on the vertical axis. Graph at least one full period and label the coordinates of important points on the graph. Okay. So they give us this graph here so we can graph it. Let's try this. So when R equals, let's see, some important points would be like zero. Let's see, let's see. What are important points? When, when well, What's sine of zero? First of all, sine of zero, that's an important point. Let me, let me change this font real quick. How's that? When R is zero, we get one minus, what's sine of zero? Zero, right? So one minus zero equals one. When R is, what's good, pi over two? So at zero, it's one. At pi over two, sine is one. So one minus three equals negative two. So at pi over two, it's negative two. At pi, pi is a good one to choose. I like I like choosing like these ones. And then like two pi are good ones. So at pi, sine is zero. So this is just one minus zero. It's just one. At three pi over two, you get one minus negative one. Well, that's actually minus negative three, isn't it? There's a three there. Because sine of three pi over two is negative one so this is one plus three so that's four <clears throat> so where's pi pi was one three pi over two is four two pi an important one because two it's zero so one minus three equals zero it's negative two so one minus three is zero one minus three is negative two all right, now let's see what's going on here. So we're at, wait, negative two again? Okay. Looks like we have a sine graph going like this. So it looks like one is the axis of symmetry here you got a max at four and a minimum at negative two now let's see some important thing that you want to do here is you actually want to graph the polar equation now that would be part b so what you do there is you go like this look so you make a graph now at zero it's one so this is zero this is pi over two this is pi, this is 3 pi over 2, this is also 2 pi. So at 0, it's 1. So how big do I need to go? I need to go to 4 and negative 2. So let's go like 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So at zero, it's one. At pi over two, it's negative two. This is interesting. Negative two is here. So that's an interesting move there. It must have crossed zero here between going from in this little curve here. It had to have crossed zero. So watch how we do that. This is very difficult, but let's try it. Cross zero, see that? And now we'll do it symmetrically. We'll keep going back up at pi. So as we go, so that would that's what happened here between zero and pi over two. Now between pi pi over two and pi, we're basically it's symmetric. So we come out and cross zero again, and we go to one. We go to a a distance of one, right? Now between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, 
we're going from sorry from pi to 3 pi over 2 we're going from 1 to 4 so we're gonna go now where's 3 pi over 2 it's down here down here right so in this quadrant we're gonna go all the way to 4 1 so basically down here so that's why we made four lines right So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, right? You can finish the symmetry now. And there you have it. It's a beautiful cardioid with this little this little thing inside of it. Whatever they call it. I forget what they call it. This little thingamajigger. But that's a cardioid with a little nim something inside of it. What's that called? Somebody tell me. But, so this is really a polar graph here that we graphed, the graph of what? One minus three sine theta. And the way we graphed it was by first making this graph here and using those points, these black points, these key points to graph it. For instance, this high point of four, right? That was this point down here at the angle of three pi over two. It's at a height of four, it has a radius of four. So that's that point. All right, that's it. Hope that helps.